Hi, my name is Heidi Miranda, and this is my presentation on social characteristics of ASD. So the social communication and interaction criteria for ASD um, are that the social communication and interaction are going to present differently in autistic individuals. However, um, you will see that there are differences in, um, in all individuals who are diagnosed with ASD or all autistic individuals. And the reason why is because that's one of the criteria from the DSM and the CDC's definition of autism is that they should have um, different struggles in social communication and interaction. However, ASD is a spectrum disorder as it states in its own name, autism spectrum disorder. Um, so therefore, these characteristics are going to look different on each person. Um, there are some stigma stigmas about ASD and social skills that are not true for all autistics. Common social interactions in ASD. So these are some things that you're going to see often when you're looking at um, social interactions in autism. So um, often they will have a hard time joining a group activity. So for example, there might be um, a group of kids playing a soccer game and the autistic child knows how to play soccer, but they don't know how to go and engage and ask if they can join th that group activity. So they might just stand there staring, watching the soccer game, having wishing, wishing that they could play the soccer game, but they don't know how to join the group. Also, um, does not engage in small talk, does not like to engage in small talk. So most of the time, autistics want to um, dive deep into, um, into a topic rather than sit and talk about the weather. They, um, they feel more comfortable talking to people that will want to have more deep conversations rather than small talk. They do not prefer to make eye contact. So this can be, this is one of those stigmas that um, it tends to be used when somebody doesn't quite understand autism, when they might say, oh, your child can't be autistic because I see them make eye contact all the time. So that's why the word is prefer. They do not prefer to make eye contact. And it could be for a number of reasons that go along with ASD. But um, in general, autistics do actually make eye contact. It's just something that they don't prefer to do or they don't always hold eye contact as long as neurotypicals will. Um, next is they may not answer to their name being called at an early age. So usually you'll see one and two year olds um, when they're playing, if you call their name, they're going to stop playing and look at you. Whereas um, it's been noted quite often in autistic children that when you call their name, they will just continue playing and not acknowledge that their name is being called. Um, and Personally, I have experience with this where I thought that my son might have had a hearing loss because he would not respond when I would call his name. And later on, he got diagnosed with autism. Um, has intense interests that may interfere with social interactions. So this can look like somebody who is very interested in space. And so they study the stars and they study planets. Um, and they want to talk about this all the time to people that they're around. They want to, because it's very interesting to them. And so, and they know a lot about it. So when they're in an, um, in a social, a social conversation, they're trying to tell somebody, um, about these planets and the stars and, um, they may not catch on when somebody's not interested and they may not understand that somebody is not as interested in that topic as they are. Um, does not engage with others while they are playing or working on a task. So sometimes you'll see um, young children will play with, let's say they have a train set and 
they're building the train set. And as they're building it, they will talk to either their other child that's playing with them or the grown up that's playing with them and say, um, oh, this train track can go here or um, I, I don't like this one. They make comments and interact at the same time as they're playing. Um, however, you'll see that autistic children tend to just continue playing and do not engage with those around them. Um, even if they are having a hard time building it, you may see that they just get more frustrated rather than ask for help. Um, and they may prefer to fidget or stem um, in social situations rather than trying to quote unquote fit in. So this can be an outside perspective of um, maybe a neurotypical perspective of an autistic individual where the autistic might just feel um, uncomfortable in that situation and stimming um, or fidgeting can be a way to bring comfort. And so that is how, but it's perceived as awkward or not socially acceptable sometimes. Other sociolinguistic interactions also include that they do not play in a way that others see as functional. So the, um, I noticed that on the resources, it says that they do not play in a functional way. Um, however, I choose to word it that they do not play in a way that others see as functional because to the autistic individual, their play is functional and there is a reason why they decide to play with toys the way that they do. And so you might see an autistic child um, instead of rolling the car on the ground and playing that the car is driving somewhere, they may decide that they want to turn the car upside down and rotate the wheels around and around and watch the wheels go. So somebody's going to say that that's not functional play. Um, however, maybe it is because the child is actually learning how the wheels work and um, they're analyzing what the, what the toy does. Um, or it could just also be a stemming thing where they like to watch things spin and it's calming them down. So it does have a function still. Um, it does not, or, or he or she does not pick up on social cues. So sometimes, like I was talking about before with a child who's very inter interested in space, wanting to talk about only space, they may not pick up on somebody who looks tired or bored or wants to leave the conversation and they will just continue to talk about that topic and also does not understand personal space. So this is something that is not particular to all autistics because some autistics are very particular about their personal space. They don't want anybody to enter their personal space and they do not like to enter anybody else's personal space. But then you'll also see it on the very other end of the spectrum where um, they're unaware of uh, people's personal boundaries and they might stand too close or talk very closely in somebody's face or even um, want to smell their hair or things like that um, that they don't realize are not socially acceptable. Skills that aren't usually talked about are some of the positive skills that I really like to focus on as well is that um, a lot of autistics are actually highly empathetic. And this um, really is something that I think needs to be talked about more because there is a stigma out there that um, autistic children or individuals do not feel empathy or sympathy and they don't understand other people's emotions. Whereas um, I've actually observed um, that a lot of times they actually do see other people's emotions and they feel other people's emotions very deeply, um, but it's hard for them to know what to do with those feelings and how to help that person feel better. So sometimes in a room where there might be a lot of emotions or when there are people around that have a lot of emotions, the autistic individual may decide to back away from that in, or try to make space for themselves or stem or whatever they need to do um, to make themselves feel a little bit more comfortable. And um, so that may look like they 
are not empathetic, but it's actually the opposite. Um, also, they bring a new light to play or social situations. So, um, like I was saying before, the child who turns the car upside down and spins the wheels around and around, um, they have a different way of looking at toys. They have a different way of looking at how things work. And that can add to play situations. Um, if they are, if the other children around are also taught how to interact um, and how to um, have different expectations. So I think that um, the some of the things that are looked at in a negative way can actually be turned around and looked at in a positive way. Also, somebody who is incredibly interested in one topic, um, they can educate people about these interests and um, and they can become really good teachers and really good friends. Um, and people can learn a lot from them because of their high level of interest in those topics. So um, that is what I have. And these are my references. This is where I found the information. Um, and um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.